Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Today I'm beginning a three-part series on three ways to use the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pens. This is also known as Stencil Stamp and Sketch Oh My. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm Stephanie, I go by StampJG here on YouTube and at my blog at StampJG.com. And in today's video we are going to look at the stencil aspect of working with the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Pens. These are really great tools to add glitzy foil to your projects in just the places that you want. One of the things I'm really excited about these is that these allow us to take foiling projects out of the laminator and out of the die cut machine and into more of a 3D kind of situation. Um, home decor, planners, mixed media projects. And what I'm hoping to do with this is to help jumpstart your unique creative process on what you might want to use these with. If you're interested in them at all. Some people aren't and that is a-okay. That's another reason why I do these videos is to help people see, gee, you know, these are a little pricey. Do I want them? Will they fit my unique crafting style? So let's get started with stencils. I had done a video and I'm laughing because I think people misunderstood that it was an experiment back when we all we had was the little sketch pens for our die cut machines and it was awkward to use in stencils but you could kind of do it. Now we have full size freestyle pens that will fit in our hand and allow us to really work with stencils in order to put foil on our projects. And there are so many different types of stencils on the market nowadays. I grabbed a collection out of my stash. Um, we have plastic stencils. We have um, oil board or paper board stencils. We have 12 inch stencils, six inch stencils, tag size stencils. In addition, you could also probably die cut um, stencils out of paper or heavyweight cardstock with your die cut machine or your um, electronic die cut machine and I will show some examples of that too. So there are any number of creative possibilities when working with stencils. One of the things that I'm going to start off with is a little bit of a caution is when you're using a stencil almost any type of stencil out of plastic is going to have um, some heat resistance but not all. So when you're using a foil quill pen you want to move your your, foil, your heat pen along the stencil slowly but keep it moving. That way you don't risk the um, damaging your, your stencil or melting a little edge into it or something. If you keep your pen moving your stencil should be fine. The other thing I want to take a look at is today when I work with this, I'm going to be using the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill uh, Magnetic Mat. I have found this to be a great tool, especially when working with stencils or projects. You can keep your um, projects held down with magnets. It is a heat resistant surface, so it protects your table or whatever you're working on underneath it, and it is just a great tool. But if you don't have this, um, a glass mat is probably your next best option. Um, anything that will protect your, your, especially if you're working on your dining room table, um, anything that will protect your table from heat or, you know, possibly getting indents or dings or whatever from the heat tools is, would be great. So let's take a look at some stencils. I love, let's, one of the other th considerations with using stencils is most stencils are created for ink techniques or paste techniques where you're spreading something over it. So they're highly, highly detailed. Um, Tim Holtz stencils are one of them. Um, Crafters Workshop makes some beautiful stencils and, but they're so highly detailed that it's, um, a little bit of a challenge to get into all those nooks and crannies with the pens. The three of the three of the foil cool heat style pens I'm going to be working with today are the fine point, the standard or medium point, and the broad point. And these all have different widths of pen nibs that allow you to get into different areas of your stencil. 
and I'm going to bring it a little bit closer to the camera so that you can see. To start off with, I'm going to use the fine point or the pink barrel pen. I have it plugged into a cell phone adapter. This is just, uh, I had actually gotten this from work as a gift um, to power your cell phone. And it's just this little thing. You can buy these. Um, it's a cell phone accessory. It's like a power bank, a battery pack, um, a cell phone charger, you know, something like that. We Are Memory Keepers also sells these. I just don't happen to have them. And you can plug it into a power source with a USB plug in it and use it off your desk if you can. I don't have access to a um, power strip near my desk. So I'm going to just use this. The cords on the foil cool pens are about 36 to 38 inches long. So you're going to want to be within 36 or so inches of your power source where you have it plugged in so that you can write freely with it. A lot of stencils have very, very fine details. These are great stencils when you're working with ink or, um, you know, embossing paste or glitz glitter gel because they can get into all those little tiny fine nooks and crannies. But it's a little more of a challenge to get into those when you're working with a pen nib like the foil quill pen. I'm going to start off with the fine point and this will work for a good portion of stencils. Um, some of them are so detailed that it doesn't work well with them, but you'll also see on some of the other stencils I have, you could use your regular point, your standard point, or even your broad point because the openings are larger to work with. I have a chevron here, and this is um, this is an older Heidi Swap foil. So I'm going to compare both of these to begin with. Let's start off with something like this. This is a Tim Holtz um, zigzag stencil. It is very um, distressed in a lot of ways. Let me this up to the camera. It is very distressed in a lot of ways. You can see a lot of little nooks and crannies. So let's see what happens when we put this on our project. If Again, if you don't have a foil quill magnetic mat or something that you're working on that's magnetic, you're going to want to use tape. You might even want to use tape anyhow to keep everything down and secure. Um, so we could do that too. And I'm trying to hold down both my cardstock and the foil. Put down a magnet. Again, I could use tape. I could have foregone the tape and just used the magnet, whatever. The one thing is this is very, very convenient. And then I have my foil quill pen plugged in and heating. It's been heating for at least five minutes. You can see the little light is on. And then we're just going to start tracing. And one of the things to remember is to go slowly, but keep your pen moving. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this. And I've had to tilt it because I'm so right-handed. It's hard for me to go up and when it's up and down like this and I need to be able to see it without getting my head in the shot. All zoomed in and I'm gonna go ahead and start tracing the stencil. And I'm gonna try to let the stencil do the work for me and just lightly, I'm not using any pressure here. I'm just lightly running my pen along the edge to let the stencil do what it does. The other thing I will say, and you know, if you've done any foiling at all or any stenciling at all with a pen or pencil, you know you have to go slow because sometimes like here you can overshoot, <laughs> overshoot the stencil and end up with a line. And once you're 
foil pen has touched the foil, you have a foil line, wherever that might be. So I'm only going to do two rows here, and then I'm going to pick it up and show you a different stencil. Whoops. I'm not going to move this piece yet. I'm going to take this older Heidi Swap stencil, and I know there's other stencils out there very similar, and I'm going to come down and put it on my project. Hold it in place with a magnet. Now I'm going to trace along this stencil. Again, moving along and not resting it in any one place too long because this will melt the plastic. Okay, for the next one, I am going to use the standard or medium point pen, freestyle pen. And my goal with this is to show the difference between working with different pen points on the same stencils. Okay. So let's go again with the Heidi Swap stencil. And to complete this, I am going to go ahead and get the broad point and I'm going to do a line down at the bottom of the broad point. Here's my foil. Okay, so here's my little sample sheet. This is all the fine point. This is the Tim Holtz stencil and the Smoother Heidi Swap stencil. This is the medium or standard point this was the Tim Holtz stencil, and this is the Heidi Swap stencil. And you can see what happens if you go back and forth sometimes. You end up with a, a multiple lines. And then the one on the bottom is the Tim Holtz stencil with the broad point and the Heidi Swap stencil with the broad point. The Tim Holtz stencil, because it was so detailed and had all these little nooks and crannies, the pen had a hard time getting into those where it did a little bit better up here, as you can see. So this was just a sample to give you an idea of how different pen points work with different stencils. The next thing I wanna do is I have a pre-done background. This is alcohol ink on Yupo paper, and it's that shimmery, beautiful shimmery alcohol ink. And I didn't necessarily like the background, but it might be kind of cute if it were a butterfly. So I'm going to pick a corner down here and put a scrap of foil down. Then I'm going to take this 12 by 12 Kaiser Craft stencil and I'm going to center it on this piece of foil. And it'll just barely fit, I think. Barely. I am going to place some magnets on both the project and the foil. So the next thing that I want to do is I know I'm using the broad tip pen, which will give me a bolder outline. But I know in these areas here, I'm going to have a little bit of a struggle where they meet. So I'm not necessarily going to follow the stencil. I'm going to make sure they meet in here before they come out.
And before I peel up the foil, I'm just going to put a kind of a little baldy thing here on the end of my butterfly antenna. And then let's see the results. And I mean, if I really wanted to hold on to this and use all these interior bits and pieces, I could. But now I have a foiled butterfly on a background. Now I can cut this out. I can cut it square and use it as a focal point on a card or a scrapbook page. I could do multiple butterflies. But that is some of the results you can get when you use a stencil. One of the fun things to do with stencils, if you have stencils that have words on them, is to use them to make a sentiment on a card or a background or even a piece of home decor. Um, a couple of the examples that I found in my stash were um, this very detailed stencil by Tim Holtz with Christmas words. And I also have this package of sentiments, mixed media stencils from Faber-Castell. And these are a larger size that would work nicely in a journal, an art journal or a planner. It has a couple of stencils that are more of an alphabet. Now there are, the other thing is I was gonna say, there are a whole lot of stencils at your big box craft store that you could use. Um, there's a very wide variety of words and alphabets and symbols and um, motifs and florals that you could pull out and use with this too. So that's one of the things that I think is really cool. Um, if you have a large enough space that is a background that is heat proof, then you could work on a much larger scale if you wanted to. It's all dependent upon the size of your project and your stencil. So let's start with this very fine detail stencil. I want to see how it works with the foil quill. And I, for this I'm going to use a piece of black cardstock and a piece of silver foil. And then I'm just going to put down my project way up here up at the top because I want to conserve this for my next project. So all of this I'm going to hold down with my magnets. Okay, so let me go ahead and trace this with my fine point foil quill freestyle pen. And then I want to try this with a medium point or the standard point pen just to see if I can get into the letters with that. So I have my medium point or standard point all heat up, heated. I'm gonna, that's gonna drive my, I'm gonna drive myself crazy with that. Heated up. Sounds so strange. I like the word heat up, I guess. I don't know. So I'm going to see if I can do a single pass through here without tracing the outside. So here we go. This was the fine point and I was able to get most of the outside of the stencil. And this is the medium point that was able to get just one single pass through the stencil because it's such a small stencil. Two different looks, but kind of interesting. And again, noting that this is a very distressed 
stencil to begin with. One of the things that you can also do is if you have craft metal dies, these thin wafer dies or any style of die, you can create your own stencil by die cutting these out of cardstock and using the space as a stencil. This would make it easy to take any of the alphabet dies that you own, especially if they are a good size, create a word that you, a custom word, a name, or something that you would like, and use that as a stencil. I am going to use this somewhat intricate honeybee die thanks set, and I'm going to create a stencil and show you just how easy it is to use this. Especially when you have a set like this that has more of a wide area bubble style die or outline die and a second die that is that would fit inside of it. And you could use either or or both of these on a project to make a stencil. I have die cut the both of these thanks words out of heavyweight cardstock on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock. What I tried to do for each one of them, because I wasn't quite sure which one I wanted to do, is I tried to put them where I wanted it to be on my final project. I decided on my card front I wanted my word to be at the very bottom of my card. So I have, let me take this piece of foil, I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of black card stock. And I am going to set a piece of foil on top. I'm using silver foil for this. And I want it to be down towards the bottom because that's where my project is. The other thing here is that I want to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on some of these inside pieces that I don't want to lose. So I've used a little bit of Zig glue pen and just off camera I put a little bit of glue on just these little tiny pieces that I want on my project. Make sure my foil is lined up with the bottom and side. Mostly because I want the card stuck, I want to be able to see the card stuck underneath it. So, I've lined my card stuck up at the top with my card front underneath it. I have it sandwiched with a piece of foil. And for just a minute, I'm going to go ahead and push these interior pieces down. They have glue on the back and I want them to heat to adhere to the top carrier sheet of the foil. And I'm just going to let it sit for just a minute and dry. Now that the interior pieces are down and dry, I am going to take out the outside piece carefully. And what I'm left with is a very cute outline to trace. And I have just a little bit of glue there, so I'll have to see what happens with this. Now I'm going to trace around the inside with the medium point foil quill pen. And this is my homemade stencil.
And there I have a traced outline in silver foil. And let's see how it would look if I were to put a die cut in the middle of that. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and use our glue pen. And while not exactly perfect for the first round, you can kind of see some lines in there. It really is not all that bad. It adds just a little bit to the project. To finish this card front and how we can use stencils with the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pens, I'm going to make another butterfly. And I am going to trace it onto my card. Now I want to place my butterfly just right and I'm going to stick a piece of foil underneath it. Let's just trace, very gently trace our butterfly onto our background. And while I'm at it, let me just do another little butterfly. About up in this corner. And good things come in threes. So let me make another butterfly down here at the bottom. Okay, maybe good things come in fours. Okay, okay. Let's see, one, two, three, four. We need one more because Design elements need, need odd numbers, right? So here we have a cute card that we created with the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pens, a couple of stencils and die cuts, and handwriting on the inside, complete with a very shiny foil quilled inside. So I hope you enjoyed today. I hope I was able to give you some ideas on how to use the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pens with stencils. Please stay tuned for the second in my series, which will be on using it with stamps. So the next part, part two, will be stamps and the Foil Quill Freestyle Pens. Thank you so much for joining me. Please feel free to leave comments or any uh, questions down below. I get to just as many of them as I possibly can. And I'm also interested in any of your tips and tricks on working with the Week Our Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pens. Thanks again.